was your first professional work right after Art Center? Um, well, when I when I, at the very end of Art Center, when I was uh, my last term, maybe two terms, I started working for uh, Doctor Strange Records, who my brother was also working for, and um, is sort of a friend of a friend's, and we ended up becoming. Uh, good friends ourselves, the Bill, the owner of Dr. Strange Records, and myself, and I ended up doing a lot of stuff for him. So I was sort of busy right from the second school got out doing stuff, and I was freelancing as well, but um, I had really been turned on because of my entertainment design classes into that field. And it was sort of, I, I mean, there would always had a need for um, those skills in film and uh, video games and so forth, but it was really at the same time, it felt like it was changing and that there was a new sort of demand for it. It was the beginning. DreamWorks had just started um, and video games were really sort of changing and taking off, especially here in the States. So this is around the late 90s? Yeah. So the, Well, I graduated in 96, mm -hmm. uh, I think April of 96, if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken. So um, so sort of very early internet too. So mm -hmm. there, was, there was just beginning at that point to be some internet based animation and content. It was still a couple years away, but it was it was starting. Um, so it really felt like things were changing, like there was a place for for the kind of things that I wanted to do and always hoped would exist. This this like I said, that that space where the entertainment design ended up filling, you know, which wasn't really um, I don't think in, in the same way at least had existed before that. So for me it was it was really fortuitous, I think, because of uh, the way things were coming together at the time that I was getting out of school. So I was doing some freelance stuff, plenty of design and advertising, but I had any free time I had was, was trying to create my own content. I was really interested in doing story-based stuff, narrative, character design, um, world building, really. That's really what sort of, um, what really sort of sparked my interest in entertainment and design classes was that idea of world building is being able to build something in mm -hmm. its entirety everything from you know the lang the the visual language of things to the to obviously landscape buildings vehicles people's people characters all of that to be to have a con to be able to conceive that and to you know bring it to life was with the idea that you could do that was amazing to me so um so it, it was kind of an odd time in the um there was a lot of beginning to be a lot of opportunity like that, but I didn't. I wasn't coming from illustration, so for me, and I wasn't coming from animation. You know, all of these the the opportunities in animation were sort of all the the students from CalArts and stuff were set up to be in that. But I didn't have any of those experiences. I was a guy that was a graphic designer that was taking some, you know, illustration entertainment design classes at Art Center on the side. And so I'm trying to now change my portfolio really in in trying to address this issue that that I was expecting to have in the first place, which. I did. So it was, was your style similar to what it was right now? Was it developing into? That? I think that in terms of yeah, I think it's always the, if I think if you look back, then you'll you'll be able to see a big changes, you know. But I, at the same time, I think you if you, you'll be able to see the bones of all that stuff, you know. I think you know, and people that have known me long enough will say that they're like, oh, this you know, this looks like the, the work you were doing 20 years ago or whatever. And obviously, it's very different. I use different tools and. Uh, have different ideas, and I would like to think they're more, much more accomplished. But you know, that's that's for somebody else to decide. But um, yeah, I think there was a, there was a lot of. Um, I don't think it's changed drastically. Is what I'm saying. Um, but at the time, I wasn't doing much digital stuff. I was just beginning to do digital work, mm -hmm. and that was sort of fortuitous as well because when, when now now that I've been out of school for a year, maybe two. Um, and internet is really starting to be a factor. So that we're looking at 98, 99, when it's really starting to, to become a huge boom. And that's when Flash became a player, a huge player, and everything needed to be, do, but be done in Flash. And so I was getting work to do stuff, and I was doing illustrations, and then they were converting them in Flash. And, you know, there was, at, the, at that point, there's so much was getting lost. You know, they would look really wonky, or they just, that, that transition and that translation that they were making was losing so much that I thought, well, is there a way that I can address this? And so I was, um, I was really, uh, you know, comfortable and had spent a lot of time working in Illustrator, uh, Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator for, for design stuff. You know, everything from logos to, you know, basic design kind of layout stuff. And so I said, well, I, I'm, you know, I have all this experience in this. Let me try doing these illustrations straight in Illustrator, since they they can take those into Flash, and maybe it will help to 
solve this problem of this this translation that is just so much is getting lost. Um, and so that's really when I started to work in in vector, mm -hmm. and uh, it was great for me because I, I I I was able to make that change pretty quickly because of all the time I'd spent in Illustrator. So it mm -hmm. wasn't the uptake for me. There wasn't a big learning curve of mm -hmm. trying to figure out how do you you know do this stuff in vector. Um, and so, like I said, that, that worked out pretty well because there was just such a huge demand for that stuff at the time. For um, And that was really all there was, was flash-based stuff, uh -huh. you know, in terms of online content. There wasn't, you know, there wasn't really streaming video, and so any of the original content almost exclusively was in flash. It was little animation pieces, you know, interstitials and some longer form stuff, but, but um, like I said, almost exclusively flash. So. Uh, and from then on, was was it was that it? You say okay, Illustrator is my is my tool from now on. Yeah, and I I ne never really had that conversation. And like I said, it just it just worked out that way. Uh -huh. That that was what was was working. It was working for me because it was a I was able to sort of cut out that middleman. So I wasn't making these drawings and then you know maybe inking them and then having somebody else scanning them and then you know bringing them into Flash. I was sort of cutting out that middleman and I got faster and more adept at it. That it just made more sense for me to do it. And there was, like I said at the time, there was the demand for it. But the problem was is that I wasn't doing, I wasn't doing my own stuff. Mm -hmm. And I remember at the time wanting to do my own stuff and I had written all this stuff while I was still in school and had continued to write after I got out of school. And I thought, well, I have all this content. And so at, at that time, I mean, even though it was, there was, the internet was present, there wasn't, it wasn't the resource that it is today. So I was, putting together my own pitch projects and sending them in the mail. You know, there wasn't, like I said, there wasn't an opportunity to do that online. So I would put these packages together and, you know, here's my idea for a show. And I would, you know, look in Animation Magazine and find addresses and, you know, all that old school stuff that you used to have to do that doesn't exist anymore. And sending out packages, like I said, to all the studios that were, were doing any sort of animation at the time. And there wasn't that many of them. Uh, so, you know, I'd send out my packages and wait a couple weeks and get a rejection and say, you know, no, we're not interested and uh, what have you. So, uh, but I thought, well, there's got to be another way. There's got to be a way to have somebody help me out with this. And so I remember um, around that time, it was probably, like I said, 97, maybe 98, that I said, well, I'm going to see if I can find, I, I knew that there was some agents that handled animation and, and you, know, you know, IP kind of stuff. And so I just started going in every sort of, you know, at the time, there wasn't the forms like we have today, but there was, you know, the precursor to that, you know, sort of bulletin boards and that kind of stuff. And so eventually I found somebody that was an agent, got in contact with them, showed them some stuff. I think I don't remember if I sent them physical copies or what, but um, it ended up be, he ended up taking me on as a client. He's still my agent today. To this day, he still does all my management stuff. Um, and then, so I started sending out some original projects, and, I, and the first real thing that I, I did in animation was actually I had sold a project of mine, um, a project called Jill the Pill to Disney. And um, so the first thing I really started do, that I did in traditional animation uh, was my own project. And so it, they, Disney bought it, optioned it, we did, um, you know, went into pre-production and development, all that stuff. And we got all the way up through animatic. And at the time they were still doing um, ABC Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. So that's what they were developing it for. And I think at the time they had what we were developing for, there was I think one slot on Saturday morning that was open. And I think they had like probably a dozen shows that were in development for that. And so we didn't make the cut. But because of that, so, you know, that, uh, you know, that show was then, you know, we got the option back and everything. But they said, hey, we loved everything you did on this show. Would you be interested in doing it on somebody else's show? So that's really how it started working in animation for me was having sort of backwards. I sold the show to them and then from there sort of uh, worked on all these other shows. So they would say, you know, hey, we have a writer that needs, you know, development artwork or whatever. So I went to a string of shows at Disney that was probably a dozen to 15 shows, you know, and, and I, for me it was great, you know, I loved doing development stuff, you know, so they would come and Disney would call and say, hey, you know, we have a pitch in two weeks, you know, we want, there's this writer wants you to do the show Bible for it. And so for me it was great, I loved doing that early stage development stuff, you know, and, um, you know, I have friends that say, hey, what are you doing? I said, well, I've been, do you know, I've been doing all these animation stuff. For Disney, like, well, has anything gotten on the air? And I'm like, no. And they're like, doesn't that bum you out that nothing gets on the air? I'm like, 
No, it doesn't. And to me, Why it still not? has it. And, you know, it's funny. That's what they would say. I'm like, to me, the joy has always been that, is doing the work, is doing the development stuff. You don't want a mass audience to see you. It, it's not that I don't want that, but it doesn't, it doesn't change it for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That doesn't make that, that, that joy or that experience, that struggle, all the things that I like about world building, really, even mm -hmm. if it's on a small scale and very contained like that, mm -hmm. everything that's appealing to me about that isn't impacted by anything else. You know, so if everybody sees it, it doesn't make it any more enjoyable for me, or nobody sees it. So it's the act you enjoy. The yeah, absolutely, is, yeah. yeah. And, it, yeah. and once it's done, I'm, I'm fine with that. You know, I'm fine if no one sees it. Um, there's been projects that I've worked on that I think were, I was disappointed that no one else got to see, not because of what I did, but because I thought it was a good project. You know, especially working in development where you're working with other people and these other people have put so much into it and you think, well, this is a great project. You know, I'm going to do what I can do for it. You know, and I hope it, I hope that other people get a chance to see it and enjoy it. And so there's been times when I felt I've, you know, I felt bad about that, but, but it hasn't changed what, you know, I'm not disappointed that people didn't see my stuff. You know, I'm like, oh, this is great. Everybody should see this or I want everybody to see it. And I've never, I've never really had that. Um, I, I guess it seems odd when I say it out loud, but it, it doesn't it doesn't bother me at all. And f I continued after that. I had probably a string of for years. It was weird. I had a very nice, successful career working in animation development, and no one ever saw my stuff, and no one knew who I, I was. And it was funny because, in a way, it kind of worked out. I realized that it kind of was working to my benefit because I would get these phone calls from or an email from somebody that saw my stuff online or something, came about it somehow. And I'd say, hey, you know, we're, we're um, writers at this network and we came across your stuff here and we really, we're big fans and we're looking for, a, you know, we think that you could do, a, you know, design something great for us for a pitch that we have coming up. Have you ever considered working in animation? And that, at that point, I'd worked in animation for years. And I'm like, it was so funny to me that, that the thing that was appealing to them was that they didn't think I had any experience. You know what I mean? Right. They thought they were going outside of the realm of animation so and getting yeah, a yeah, fresh take yeah, on something. Yeah. And it was so funny to me. I'm like, yeah, this is... And there was actually literally a time where I got a call from some writers at Disney. And they said uh, pretty much what I just said. Like, hey, you know, we're, we're, uh, we've done this show. We're working on this show now. We think you'd be great. Have you considered working in animation? And I said, I said, that's so funny. I said, I'm literally... I said, I'm right now designing a show for so-and-so. And he goes, oh, they're literally next door to us. So I, had a, I was working on a show for somebody that was in you know, one office. And the office next door was calling me saying, hey, have you, would you consider ever working in animation? And so it, it, I guess it kind of worked to my benefit because, like I said, I, they felt like they were getting fresh eyes, I think, on, on something. You know? um, and there was times when, actually still to this day, we're all going to call from somebody in, at a network and they say, hey, you know, we have this project. We think you'd be great, you know, to do a take on it. And I said, why don't you guys just go downstairs? You know, you guys have hundreds of hundreds of the, the most talented, skilled people literally in the world. Why would you well we want somebody we want somebody outside of the which is ridiculous. These mm -hmm. people, they can do that. They can, you know, you go downstairs and talk to the artist. They can do whatever it is that you want to. You're not that's their job too. You know, you're, you're getting the exact same thing from me that you would get from them, except that you are, they're already in your, your studio. You know, so there's, there's that kind of thinking that's, you know, puzzling sometimes from mm -hmm. animation. I guess I'm sure it's not exclusive to animation that it's in sort of any industry that... Well, it's also the case that a lot of guys who work in animation, they, they're in that system and, and they choose that life where they don't stand out. But you're a guy who was in animation, but you, you did go outside the system and that you, you also publish your own books. So you did say, and you did prints right. and stuff like that. So you, so a guy like you is, is more, um, um, more out there than someone who's already within the system. Correct? Right. Yeah, and that's, I mean, and that's, that I had always had that idea of, um, I'd always loved that DIY aspect of things you know and, and anytime that there was a new technological advance or there was a bit of something that came along that enabled you to make something that you couldn't make before that always intrigued me you know I remember when when people just first started doing being able to do video online and to me that was the the, the idea and, and 
and certainly not alone in that, but you know, thinking how much that was going to democratize, you know, film and and uh, that kind of content, I was just astounded. And and it's usually the case; it doesn't always live up to the hype or your expectations of it. But I think it has changed things tremendously. So anytime there's something that that does um, lower the bar or the barriers to entry to something, to me, I just I. I don't know. I just I guess I can get so excited about that stuff. That anytime you have an opportunity to do something that was previously was you know the exclusive realm of you know big business or corporations or people that had a lot of money. So anytime that changed, whether that that's publishing or filmmaking or you know anything like that is is um, that's immediately appealing to me, and it gives you a chance to try something you know that that you you was beyond your, um, you know, be, that opportunity was beyond you before. What, what have you um, not done in art that you still want to do? Uh, you know, that, that's a good question. And I, as, as strange as it is, I'm beginning to get to the point where I don't, I don't know anymore. You know, that, that's, a, that's a question I ask myself all the time and that list used to be really long. Um, and some, and a lot of that has been like I've had a chance to do it, you know, to to my satisfaction, not to, maybe not to anybody else's, but but and sometimes that just means just dabbling a little bit. Sometimes it means doing a lot and f sort of investigating every corner of that. Um, and, and part of it is is and sometimes those things just fall off the list by themselves, you know. Enough time goes by where you didn't get a chance to do it that you don't have it does it's not appealing anymore. And you're like, well, okay, I guess that wasn't that important to me. But it is, I have noticed that that list does get smaller and smaller. And for a long time, the big thing was, was feature films. Um, and, and not for the reason that I, today it's, it's, I don't have the same rationale or the desire isn't the same coming from the same place that it was probably 10 years ago. Today it's much more, I think in a lot of ways, much more organic. And that there are some stories that I'd like to tell that that's the only way to do it. Whereas before, I think 10 years ago, there would have been a lot of other aspects to feature film that would have appealed to me that didn't necessarily have anything to do with that. I don't know if that makes any sense, but there, there's something very sort of sexy and very um, uh, romantic. Specifically in, in features that you want to do, like in, or just in general art direction or designs or concept um, designs? Uh, it's certainly that, yeah, but not 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 exclusively that, not just that. Whereas, and that's I guess that's what I was trying to say before is is the the, the impetus, the reasons for me wanting to do a big feature film are are different than they were before. The desire is the same, or, or I still want to do it, but the things that make me want to do it, or I'd want to get out of it, are different. Okay. I, I think there may be more pure now. If if that doesn't sound too pretentious, they're more organic. That they're I, I honestly believe that the only way I could tell a certain kind of story would be this way. And maybe I'm wrong, maybe there, it's not, but it feels like that. Like I have some ideas and some very, very uh, formed ideas, not just, you know, general ideas that could only be told, told this way. And like I said, maybe that's wrong, maybe it's, it's, it's I'm fooling myself, but it, it feels right. It feels like it's, this is, that would be the answer for this question.